Uh, can, gr growing up, can, can you recall uh, what it was about the harmonica as an instrument that, that first uh, attracted you to it? Uh, I, I don't know. I guess it was just kind of right there, easy for me, you know? I mean, I can't really say why exactly. I, I just like the sound of it, and uh, I thought it was, a, a you know... I knew I, I knew it would have taken me a long time to learn a guitar, so uh, I just picked it up and I started playing around on it. And I, then I had I realized I had kind of had an affinity for it. And um, you know, of course, a lot of people helped me out in the very beginning, encouraging me. A lot of the old guys, you know, I was playing with Eddie Taylor a year after I started playing. So. Uh, it was, uh, with that kind of encouragement, people telling me that they liked it, I just kept going. Tell us about uh, your involvement in music before the, the Fabulous Thunderbirds got together, what, what we were up to. Well, I was out there in California, and uh, I was, uh, had a couple bands, you know. I had a lot of bands, actually, before I got with the uh, Thunderbirds. Uh, just playing around, trying to learn, you know, playing with a lot of the old guys, like I said, you know, back then I was playing with uh, Eddie Taylor, George Harmonica Smith, John Lee Hooker, Furry Lewis, Johnny Shines, Pee Wee Creighton, Lowell Folson, Albert Collins. I played with, I played and knew all those guys very well before I ever got, uh, before I ever started the Pee Birds. Um, you were still a teenager when you were playing with some of those legends. Was it was it hard not to be overawed by it all? Did the significance of it sink in with you at the time? Of course, <laughs> <laughs> you had to pinch yourself. You had to pinch yourself, but then you had to learn how to. You know, you had to get up there and do something. Otherwise, you realize you're probably not going to get back up there. You know, I mean, back in that time, uh, you know, it wasn't easy for a person to get on a bandstand if they weren't ready. And, you know, now it's just common that people are, you know, 90% of these people out there are on a bandstand when they're not ready. But back then, if you got up when you weren't ready and you stunk it up, you weren't going to get back up there for a while or ever. So, uh, you know, uh, I guess I was ready at that time. I mean, I was playing with all those people, and uh, it was, uh, you know, play, playing with people like Muddy Waters, of course. I was in my early 20s when I was playing with Muddy and Jimmy Rogers, and, um, you know, uh, and that was incredible. I, know, I never took it for granted. I, I just really appreciated every moment of it, and... Uh, uh, it, it's it's been a great run for me as, as far as that kind of stuff goes. I mean, uh, I pretty much live for those people still. I don't really, I don't really live for much of anything else except for those old guys. And uh, every time I pick up a harmonica or I open my mouth to sing, it's really for them. M Muddy Waters, in particular, had a, had a reputation of supporting younger musicians on the way up, and, and now, as an experienced musician yourself, you seem to be going down that same path. Do you, do you feel having that youthful enthusiasm around you is infectious? I'm oh, sorry. M do I have the youthful? Do youthful. Do I have the youthful what? Do you feel that having youthful enthusiasm of younger musicians around you is is infectious? Oh uh, yeah. I do. I, I like the idea of, of young people picking up the instrument, doing the right thing with it. You know, it's very rare when you really find that. But when you do find it, you, you, you uh, encourage it, uh, try and nurture it the best you can. Uh, like, like the guys in the Thunderbirds right now, they're a little younger than me, quite a bit younger, actually. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, yeah, just that energy, you know, just the energy of it, and, and uh, I, I'm one of these people, you know, I never really grew up anyway, so uh, I'm, I like having people who are as immature as I am around me. <laughs> 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 uh. 
did you know exactly from day one the type of band you wanted when you when you formed the Thunderbirds? Uh, I had I didn't really know I knew what band I wanted. Yeah, uh, you know, but I knew I would never get that. Uh, the band I wanted was you know Otis Span and <laughs> <laughs> you know Otis Span and Jimmy Rogers and Lisa Tucker. I got to play with a lot of them. I never had them all in the same band, but. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, I've been able to to deal with all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm, I'm uh, I love the guys I'm playing with. Uh, I think they're really, really great musicians. I think they're very versatile musicians. Uh, I'm real. Uh, <clears throat> I'm real excited about their development as well. And I think uh, you know, I it's it's. The Thunderbirds right now are as about as close as I can get to what I really, really want, you know. And then, and that, and not to say, I mean, who knows what's going to happen down the line here? I might add a piece, you know. I might, uh, uh, who knows? I might add, several, I might add several pieces. I don't know. But uh, as far as the core group goes, I can see hanging on to them for a long time. It'd be safe to say, I guess, the Thunderbirds aren't really the straight-ahead blues band that it may have been in, in the early days. Do you think uh, the evolution of style changes you've gone through the years has contributed to uh, the band's longevity, help keep things fresh? Absolutely. I think, yeah, you get, it does keep things fresh. I think that, uh, you know, uh, my philosophy has always been from the very beginning uh, that you just have to play the music that you like. You know, it all goes hand in hand. Uh, blues, soul, R&B, rock and roll, all that stuff goes hand in hand. And, uh, you know, I really learned it from James Cotton on the first, on that first Merv record that he had. You know, he was singing Knock on Wood and Something You Got and all this stuff. But he was also doing then Off the Wall and, and uh, Blues in My Sleep and Don't Start Me Talking. And then he'd go to like a little Milton doing... Uh, Need You So Bad and, and Sweet Sixteen by B.B. King. So he was covering a lot of bases. Uh, and, and that's really, uh, he really legitimized all that for me when I heard that. And that was at a very, very young age. Yeah. So, you, you know, I think that you really have to go in a lot of different directions. You know, I, I have this pop music side to me as well. What I think is pop music. I don't know if that's true. But, but. You know, I, I, and I think that, that I have this kind of solely R&B side that I'm tapping into on this new recording by the Thunderbirds. I think that uh, uh, I'm really uh, in, enjoying being able to do all the things that I'm able to do. You know, there's no reason why you can't do something that you're able to do musically. Mm. If it's cool and you like it, you know. Um, so that, that's what I'm trying to exploit in myself. I'm trying to exploit the, 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 the different directions that I can go in. And, and, you know, it also gives you a little bit better chance for, for success. You know, you bring in a few more, you know, a few different people in your audience that wouldn't necessarily listen to straight blues. And, and, uh, you bring a lot of people playing blue, you know, when you're playing blues, you, you bring a lot of people in, from the other side who might not even have known what blues was. So as long as you're playing legitimate music and it's good music, uh, and, uh, it's cool. Hey, knock yourself out if you're able to do it. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Uh, have you ever stopped to ponder what career path you may have taken? Had you not made that initial move to Austin, Texas and, and formed the band way back when? Oh, I thought I thought if I you thought you were going to say if if I decided not to play music or so. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, no, no, I haven't pondered it. No, I mean I would have gone on playing or, or somewhere. You know, my thing was that I could always sing. Mm. So uh, no matter what level I was at, I was a pretty good singer, and I think that that uh, you know, the singer is always in control of his own destiny. You know. I, I think if you don't, if, if you're not a good singer, you might have difficulty out there being just a guitarist or especially just a harmonica player. There's really no need for any, you know, for a harmonica player that doesn't sing. And it's just too bad, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, 
you know, I always had, uh, like I say, uh, I had a pretty broad musical spectrum that I that I enjoyed. You know, of course, I love the blues. Uh, I love, you know, the real blues. That's what I love. And I love, but before I started playing that, I love soul music. I listened to it all the time when I was a kid before I started playing in bands. I used to love that stuff. You know, Wilson Pick and Aretha Franklin, Otis Redding, you know, all these guys. I, I, I love that stuff. So, uh, you know, all the Motown stuff. And that was those were hit records when I was a kid, so that, it was easily accessible. It's been uh, well over 20 years now since uh, Jimmy Vaughan uh, left the band, and at the time it would have been a, a really big void to, to fill. Were you pretty determined right at that time when when you got that news to, to keep the band going no matter what? I didn't take much determination. It was pretty easy to do. Yeah. I mean, I had, I, I've had nothing but great players around me the whole time. Uh, you know, uh, it, it was just business as usual. We didn't, we didn't ever stop. And, uh, you know, started out with, with Robillard and Bangham and then Kid Ramos and now uh, then Nick Curran and, and uh, well, Troy Gagne was in there, Nick Curran and Kirk Fletcher. Uh, now, now these new guys. And, uh, you know, uh, I've enjoyed all of it. You know, they're all world-class musicians. Um, and I, I think they all really have uh, something to say. As much as no no one of them has more to say than the other one, you know. Mm. Uh, I, I got uh, these guys right. These guys right now that I have are really really good. I mean, really, like I say, very versatile. Can play blues. You know, we're back to playing some blues now. We went to we went through the period where uh, you know. Uh, playing blues was a little bit discouraged by by you know, people in my organization, and uh, you know, and that was a long, long, long time ago. That was back in the tough enough days, and I, and so that's when I decided to strike out on my own and do do a bunch of solo stuff, and I'm still doing that. But but I always have to have that that side of me uh, satisfied. And when people are telling me to get out of that mode, uh, you know, totally, uh, you know, I just, I'm just not going to do it. Mm. So, uh, you know, because that's where I live. That's really the basis for everything that I do is, is that blue stuff, you know. Uh, and so I think that, uh, you know, now it's, it's kind of been a few years in the process, but, but we've really come back to when we do play some blues, it's real. And and it's uh, that's very very important to me. And I'm not, not only that, but but uh, predictable things to me just can't happen. I I just won't allow that. I it, I have to keep the music fresh. Everything is improvised in what I do. My set list is improvised. Uh, everything I play is improvised, and everything uh, that my guys play is improvised. So. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I can't have predictability. I can't have some rehashed music going down. You know, I, I need I need something that that I can sink my teeth into creatively, and and it, to me that's very 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 important. Otherwise, you know, I would have quit playing a while back because if I'm not if I'm not satisfied in that way. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's, it's it's really a demand that I make on on. Um, all the people that I play with, and uh, you know, I've, I've I've been between the T-Birds and the, and the solo band. You know, I've I've been very very satisfied with with the with that routine. G- going back to the tough enough days, you, you uh, well, you you achieved commercial success on, on a pretty uh, big scale with uh, at a time when the music charts were overloaded with. Uh, Overproduced records laden with synthesizers. You must look back on that as a major achievement that you're able to to get that success without compromising the band's sound. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, the, there was an evolution there. I mean, we went. It, it was it was produced in a modern way. No, but there wasn't a lot of gadgetry. No, you know, you're right about that. But and, and really, I think that that I just wanted to prove that I could do it. 
Mm. And I think that was, that was the key to the success. You know, there was another thing where people were saying, well, you guys just can't do that. You know, you don't have any, uh, you don't have any future in, in contemporary music. And, uh, of course, when somebody tells you that, you want it, you, you want it even more. <laughs> That's right. So uh, I, I think that, that we really, uh, uh, it was really all about proving that we could do it. And, and, and yeah, we, we, were, we wanted to expand our audience, you know. Uh, now, how do you do that without, uh, quote, unquote, selling out? Well, um, it's difficult. I mean, you, you know, uh, I think there were a lot of people, even during when, when the Tough Enough days happened, I think that there were a lot of old fans who might have been disappointed. Uh, but, you know, you can't play somebody's private party forever. You know, you have to invite more people in. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I think that we, I think we achieved commercial success w without compromising too much. Absolutely, yeah. Over the years, when, when recruiting new musicians for for the Thunderbirds, has there been a criteria that you've worked to when making your selections? Are there any qualities in the musician that that they've needed to have to to make them a, a proper member of the, of the Thunderbirds? Well, you just have to know everything, <laughs> especially if you're a guitarist. Yep. You have to know all styles of blues music. You have to know R and B. You have to know rock and roll. You got to know a lot of different stuff, uh, and you have to be creative and, and, and have your own voice in, in doing it. So it's kind of incredible that you know I've had these many people in, around me who I felt could do that. And I, I think that. Uh, you know, a bass player, for instance, I mean, he's really, a, that's a really special talent. You know, I mean, you have to have so many different things. And, 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 an, and an original approach, I can't stress that enough. You have to have an original approach. Yeah, sure, you you will have been uh, influenced by a lot of people, you know, but all those influences and the more you have the better uh all those influences and when you jumble them all up they make you who you are mm. and you, you know you, you you put them in your memory banks and when you spit them out it's you you know i think if you dwell on one or two people that you're influenced by i think you're going to have a hard time doing anything but emulating that person so uh I think it's very, very important. You, I mean, you have to have your own voice. I knew a long time ago when I was knocking off little, little Walter solos off of records, uh, I knew right then that that's no way to live. You know, little Walter is little Walter. He, that, that's sacred ground. You don't tread on it. You know, if you can possibly have the musical freedom that little Walter had or something close and, and have your own style, cool. But... Uh, your own voice. It's very, very, very important. I've got to say, Kim, I think you, I feel that you, you're singing better than you ever have before. I think Kim Wilson, the singer, has really come to the fore in recent years. Are you a subscriber to the belief that uh, a singing voice is a bit like a fine wine? It gets better with age, particularly in a, in a music form like the blues? Well, you're not supposed to get worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, it takes a long time to... to uh, legitimize yourself as a singer uh, singing basically black music. You know, uh, I think that uh, it really takes a lifetime. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that, uh, especially singing blues music, and, you know, now I'm, I'm starting to sing more into a soul R&B kind of groove, you know. Uh, you know, it's it's funny how that works. I mean, you can be singing, you can have all these cool, almost neo soul kind of grooves going on, but uh, it's still you singing. 
So, uh, once again, you know, uh, the influences may not even, may be even less apparent, you know, in the singing style, uh, because I, you know, it just comes out that way. But as far as just how you phrase it, the quality of your voice, uh, you know, the d delivery of it, you know, it's all about delivery and music. If you can't deliver it and you're just hitting scales and singing notes, uh, as well as playing, you know, the same thing, I, I think, uh, you know, you, you have to stop thinking about that stuff and just really sell the song to people. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, and I really, it's all about, you know, hitting them in the, you know, something below the head. I, I think that uh, females definitely listen to music differently than men do. All right. Uh, they, they they listen to it with their with their guts. They listen to it with their soul, and uh, you know men they they tend to analyze things. And, uh, <clears throat> and I, I think that's why you see so many great female artists out there today. I think that they're able to deliver songs better than a lot of the guys are. Uh, you know because it, it, you know it's it's all about the emotion and setting the the tone, setting the mood. And, 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 you know, spilling your guts to the people. Uh, it's very, very important. Being the, the only original member of the band remaining, I get the impression it's been particularly important to you to keep presenting the band as a, as a whole unit, not just Kim Wilson with backing band. Would that be a fair comment? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, sure, of course. Everybody in the band is a focal point. You know, it's not me in a spotlight and uh, everyone else in the, in the background in the shadows. No, everybody gets. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about this gig for for players who come in. <laughs> and that's one. That's one of the reasons they they enjoy coming in is because uh, they're gonna. They know they're gonna get a lot of time. You know, and and that's uh, it's important to me. I mean, uh, it's another reason why you have longevity is that people aren't just focused on you. There's a lot of different ways to go. It's really part of the show. Having great people, uh, uh, great soloists up there uh, who are also, you, you can, you can focus on people just playing a rhythm part. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's always been very important to me. Sure. Uh, tell us about the current lineup and the guys that are coming down uh, to Australia with you and their backgrounds. Well, you got the Moeller brothers, Johnny on guitar and Jay on drums, and uh, I've known uh, I've known them since they were teenagers. Uh, you know, they just played with a lot of people there in Austin, worked with a lot of uh, Texas people, but also a lot of the Chicago people that came down. Um, you know, have a lot of lot a lot of experience at, at a relatively young age, and and uh, you know just. Uh, a couple of guys who appreciate a lot of different things, you know, and they, they like a broad spectrum of music as well. You know, I mean, Randy Bermuda's on a bass. I mean, he's, he's an incredible musician, a very original style, um, but very deep into a lot of different kinds of music himself, you know. Uh, uh, and you can't really put a finger on who his influences are hardly. I mean, he's just really good. That's, that's how original he is. Uh, and, and very, very skilled, you know, just a, a great player. Mike Keller, he's the youngest guy of the bunch. And, you know, uh, he came in under Clifford Antone's wing a long time ago. Antone is, was always a very big promoter of this kid. I think he's just, an awesome player. He's only going to get better. He's already one of the top in the world right now. And uh, he's just constantly surprising you with, with the stuff that he's able to do. Uh, it's great to have him. Great to have all these guys. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, one, one key factor is they're all kind of close to the same age. So they... Uh, they can relate to each other, mm. you know, and I think I got lucky there. I, I think that a lot of times you, you get people that are that, that can't relate to each other and they, they can't really hang with each other. 
and uh, when you're when you're on the road, it's not an absolute prerequisite to to have somebody that you like, you know. Um, but it really helps. Huh. You you do keep a, a pretty heavy touring schedule. I think I saw 300 gigs a year quoted at some point. How do you avoid uh, becoming road weary? Well, I don't do that anymore. I don't do 300. Uh, I was hovering around 300 for a long time, 250 between 250 and 300. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what it is now. It, it's a lot still, but uh, I just try to make myself as comfortable as I can out there. Uh, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not uh, drinking myself to death like I did, you know, 25 years ago. I haven't had a drink in a long time. And, uh, you know, I'm able to come to places like Australia now and uh, be a tourist. I mean, I really enjoy walking around. I really enjoy, uh, you know, just seeing a lot of things that I might not have seen in the old days because uh, I was so hot. You know, but I think that... that, I can't. I can't even imagine uh, doing that kind of unhealthy stuff and being on the road right now. I wouldn't be playing music. Oh, I'd be dead. Yeah. But uh, I, uh, you know, I, I just love to play more than ever. So, yeah, it does get uh, it does get hard. I mean, you know, I, I was just talking today about having to get up at five or six in the morning, or four or five six in the morning every day for for three days on this little run that we're doing, and and. Uh, you know that's hard, but I can now I can deal with it pretty well. I, I think that uh, uh, you know also a little more time at home. It, it really helps. Yeah. A little more time, a, a little more time doing some fishing, doing some golfing, or just not doing anything. Not doing anything is a pretty cool thing. It's not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> And just before I let you go, Kim, uh, after you finish here in Australia, what, what, what's in your books for the rest of the year? That's a good question. I, I have no idea. I just go where they tell me to go. <laughs> Recording-wise, you know? anything at all recording-wise? Uh, well, I got, you know, uh, the blues band is also signed. Can you hold one second? Yeah, one sure. second. Yeah. Uh, the blues band was signed to Southern Records as well. Uh we got some great, great, great tracks uh, with the T-Birds. Uh, I'm really loving it. It's really more of an R&B and soul kind of direction at this point, uh, which I'm really enjoying as well. Fantastic. And uh, I think that uh, uh, you know, there'll be a lot of a lot of time in the studio. Uh, I've been on a lot of records in the last year's time. I mean, I've been on Clapton, Kid Rock. Uh, 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 Mark Knopfler, Raphael Sadiq, um, you know, and and others. And I'm I'm looking forward to doing more of that too. I just did Little Feet. I was just on the new Little Feet record. So I mean, uh, those are pretty cool names to be able to drop, you know. And yeah. but I'm just going to go out and they just, they're going to tell me where I'm going and I'm going to go and that's it, you know. <laughs> Well, we're extra glad that Australia is in your books for uh, for April. We're really looking forward. It's been quite a while since we've uh, seen you down here, so we're, we're looking forward to it immensely. Thanks again for your time, Kim. I'll, I'll let you get out to the golf course now while there's still some daylight over there. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'll and, talk to you soon. And we're here ready and waiting for you in April. We'll see you then. Come say hi. Thanks again. Bye-bye. All the best.